Some people, when you audience may have already been shown, some people may not Anyone have done. Anyone seen it? Hooray! Oh, oh, good. Good. Um, so for those who haven't, can you tell us yeah. a bit what it's about? Well, it's basically, it's a play exploring the relationship between Mrs. Thatcher and the Queen um, over those 11 and a half years, which was, safe to say, um, well, rumoured to be slightly uh, um. prickly, difficult and all the rest of it. So it's an investigation into that. We don't actually know very much, do we, really? There's not a lot of evidence out there. So a lot of it is very fun conjecture. Um, but we do, there are various bits of evidence, like the, the Sunday Times thing, for those of you who've seen it, you know, and obviously a lot of you probably remember it, where there was an expose in the Sunday Times um, of the Queen's true thoughts yeah. about... But obviously a lot of rumours. Yes, a lot of rumours. But we have, we have a lot of fun with it, really, and I mean, they're two very, very different women, so that is potentially <laughs> disastrous when you got to meet every week for 11 years. Um, and it's, it's just really good fun. There's, um, for those who haven't seen it, there's a particular kind of conceit in the play that's mm. absolutely integral to, to it, which is that there are, well you mentioned there are three of us, we're missing <laughs> our, our other Mrs. Thatcher, but there are two Mrs. Thatchers and there are two Majesty and Queens on simultaneously all the way through the play, apart from Top and Taken. But, um, so you've got the older queen, the older Thatcher, the younger queen, the younger Thatcher. Um, so this gives us some good, great license to, um, for, for the queens to, and the Mrs. Thatchers to comment on the speculation that the play um, lays out in front of you. So there's a lot of room for fun and irony. And also and legal jokes. protection. Because yeah. you can we, deny we can it. deny things. So I didn't say that. I didn't yeah. say that. Yeah. And, so your share uh -oh. role, which for an actor is quite an odd thing to do, does that mean you have to really get on to get through rehearsals? We all massively get on anyway. Yes, we it's a glorious cast. And I know that sounds like we're faking it, but we're really not. We really I'm do. I'm going to try and be all the sarky and go, it's hell on earth. It doesn't work at all. No, but luckily, we are all, um, we get on very, very yeah. well. And we're all sort of creatively um, uh, mapped, very well matched, in that we're good at we are very good at passing the ball between us and sparking each other off and stuff. Um, it's got I was quite a vaudevillian, quite a vaudevillian style to it in a way. In some ways, it's like yeah. lots of sketches. And there are two lovely men with us as well. Yeah. We mustn't overlook who play a hundred parts each, really, from Nancy Reagan. Going to yes, you know, man. I was going to say because everyone talks about your roles, obviously, but they do play quite a lot of roles. <clears throat> oh, I think they have yeah. such a laugh. I'd love to play their roles. <laughs> actually, I think just so much fun, and they're they're just terrific. They really also good. get to be they are actors being the roles, whereas we are very much the characters. Mm. Um, so there's a, that's a kind of different, a different It sounds very well. confusing, doesn't it? It's, it's very good. good. And it sounds <laughs> intellectual. It's not remotely, it's very funny. Yeah. It's just lots it's, of daft jokes. There's yeah. some quite daft, rude jokes as well, which I, I was rather enjoying. <laughs> and it's a good trip down memory lane for those of us who knew that era as well. And even if you didn't, I think it's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it gives you quite a lot of history yeah. of that, that period, yeah. But it's, it gives you a lot of history, but it's never kind of shoving it down your throat, is it? It's very cleverly done. I'm glad you say so. There we go. <laughs> it's very clever writing. Yeah. yeah. It's very, very, it's very, yeah, it's very yeah. well structured, isn't it? It's yeah. almost, I mean, it, just in the way that the, the comedy hands over to a serious point, hands back to comedy so that you never get saturated with one or the other. Mm. Um, and obviously we can't avoid it. You are playing very divisive characters. I know that <laughs> divisive is the word that comes up in every yeah. single handbag interview. I know, but, but I try never to use it. How really? does it feel to, to play characters? I mean, when I saw it in the auditorium before, pe people were debating until the curtain came up about the Queen, and there were loads of, lots of tourists talking about the Queen, and it, like they were coming to see her, to see yeah. the show. Yeah. <laughs> and lots yeah. of people talking about Thatcher and how they hated her or how they loved her. Yeah. Everyone has an opinion on these yeah. characters. It's kind of the most fun when the audience are divided, mm -hmm. and, and Marion's always wanting there to be a punch up in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Things to really hot up. But we occasionally get heckled. Yeah. We always yeah. really enjoy. We think of those as great gold stars. Oh dear. But it's it's really fun. That's in a way that's it should be like being in Parliament and two sides of the house having a good old argy bargy, really. Um, and I think that that's fun. I think that there's whether you hated Thatcher or loved her, if you want to throw rotten eggs or roses, you can you will find a reason to do both, I think. Yes. Mm. I, I think it's very moving at the end as well when it, you're looking at the, the demise of Margaret Thatcher and yeah. the, the, the way she fell from grace 
finally um, and what power does yeah. to people and all the rest of this? And yeah. I mean, obviously, also we're, we're, we're playing the same role. Not you know. <laughs> so, I'd like to. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, you're very, you're very different at different times of your life as well. So yes. although you are playing the same role, I think that different aspects and certainly that trajectory over eleven and a half years. I think that she was a very different person at the beginning of it to at the end of it. Um, so you've got that as well within the story. You have, and, and also we got this. When you've got these. They're, they're, I think it's not excessive to say they are iconic figures. Mm. Um, certainly, Mrs. Thatcher is, and the Queen it's exists enough, still as this, you know, this figurehead. That's sort of the point of her. And everybody has an attitude. Everybody feels that they know them. Mm. And there's really quite a lot known about Mrs. Thatcher. Of course, we don't really know that much about the Queen at all. Most of it is our projection, um, which is perhaps could be argued the point of her. But um, uh, what we get to play with is an idea of what they, the Queen might be like behind the scenes. She's playful, and in fact, every, people who know her do report that she's much more playful, jolly, funny, witty. Yeah, she's got a sense of humour. Yes. Apparently she's very good at mimicking people. Yeah. And, uh, is she? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. And, and yet her public um, pronouncements are always so controlled, almost underpowered sometimes they see when you look at the Christmas messages and stuff. So it's quite interesting that she can't present too much of a human character because she's still got to stay a figurehead. But we get to play with yes. who she might really be. Mm. And of course when her horse wins, Katie, that's when you see her, probably at her, her best and what she's really like. <laughs> yeah. And if the Queen has been known to come to the theatre, would, what would you think she'd make of it? Would you like her? What would you, what would you feel if you saw her in the audience? Um, I'd love her to come, but I think probably it's a little bit too controversial in a sense, um, because if she came, it might be that she people would perceive she was taking one side or another. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I say I'd love her to come, um, because I think, I hope she would like our depiction of her, which I hope is very warm. And I think she comes off very well. I think she's yeah. very jolly. <laughs> but, um, she's a bit jolly. But it would be terrifying as well. So but we, but we'd sort of like to fantasise that she's got a, a prosthetic that she puts on yeah. for these occasions yeah. and that she's been on. <coughs> <already, you know. laughs> I have to say, however, there is she opens, doesn't she, with saying, I've never been fond of the theatre. Yes. And, yeah. and that does sound uh, <clears throat> quite plausible, apparently. She really isn't that key. She'd much rather be at the races, obviously. Yeah. So um, I don't think we're going to hold our breath. No. no. And going back to being heckled, that must be <laughs> terrifying as an actor. What's the worst thing that anyone shouted out? Is it usually joking or is it genuinely very offensive? It's, it's no. Mm. It, it tends to be it tends to be supportive of the of the play, even if it's saying down with what you're saying. Yeah. Maybe it's something that's saying. <laughs> or it may be in support of um, the minors at the, at the minor strike section yeah. or something like that and so it tends to be very engaged it's not mm. we're so far touch wood we're lucky that it hasn't been get off your rubbish no. <laughs> I, I, and i mean sometimes <coughs> it's just people applauding things they agree with yeah. um, and, and you get that from both sides don't you, you get it from both sides you know, the boys, yeah. the boys yeah. do one of kinnock's speeches and that sometimes gets around and then you know, clearly there's another side. And Margaret Thatcher has a speech, and that gets around. Like that gets around. Yeah. So yeah. it's um, it was it was quite fun actually. We did it at the tricycle before doing it at the Vaudeville, and then you could also back, which was yeah. quite fun in character. It's quite a laugh. But and we did actually one night have Neil Kinnock was in, yeah. and he, he is is a character in it. And in fact, he, he heckled. heckled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said, they said it, that the second half opens with the two actors discussing which character they're going to play. One of them says, well, I'm going to play Neil Kinnock, at which Neil Kinnock yelled out from the back of the auditorium, you'll have to learn to play golf then, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> and from a logistical point of view, playing the same roles, do you have a discussion about how you're going to do that? I know Stella's not here, sadly, mm -hmm. but do you talk mm -hmm. about having a manner excess of mannerisms you're going to bring through the whole performance to be consistent? Not really. I think Just because really. it's because it's an ensemble piece. You're, you know, when we rehearsed, we were all in the room together for a long period of time. You you inevitably pick up each other's mannerisms and vocal intonations and that sort of thing as you go along. We never had a conscious discussion. Stella and I certainly didn't. No. Um, yeah. And as I said before, you know, I think eleven and a half years. You're very different. You're very different at the beginning of it. Um, 
I get to do a little bit of that, I think, within the play. Um, so, in a way, they are the same characters, but they're not the same characters. It was slightly different for me, because I actually wasn't, I'm the only member of the company who wasn't in, in the production of The Tricycle, or Transfer to the West End. So, the production was already a very successful show. Much more successful now, Lucy's in it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't have an Olivier award now. Yes, this is true. Yeah, this is true. I can't, certainly can't claim an award for that. <laughs> that was for the show when it was there, but it's a wonderful thing to have, and, and I'm very proud to be part of this production, very proud. Mm. So it was a bit different for me, because I was joining the company with this show that was already very successful, but luckily for me, Moira Buffini, the wonderful playwright, did want to make some adjustments yeah, and not. changes to the script, mm. so it was an opportunity for her to change things. So it wasn't just that I'd come in and go, stand there, stand there, do this, do that, which would be pretty boring, actually. Um, and it's getting even more scary. Everybody had new stuff. So yeah. they're all going, oh, go on, blimey. So it was hard for everybody. <laughs> so it, it was a great shake up, I think, and it gave me a great opportunity to go, well, how can I fit in my feelings about the, my character, Liz, and how she's going to grow up into Marion's character? You know, that's where she's headed. So it's very helpful to have someone go, well, this is my end stop. I work backwards towards that. Plus, with all the license that we're allowed to go, we only really know her public face. I can make up her private face. Um, and just with bits and pieces of my research and stuff. But I found, even recently, I have been, you probably don't know I'm doing this, I've been taking stuff from you all the time. All the time. <laughs> it's an incredible support having somebody else be your other half on stage. Yeah. And because she's the finished article, as it were, um, I'm, I'm found that I'm, I'm taking it from, I mean, literally at one point, I'm actually even mirroring you at one point. You couldn't even know I'm doing that. Very nice. And the first time that you put on those costumes and some production images behind us, the transformation is incredible. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness that we've got wigs and makeup and all the rest of it, because you can come in feeling so far away from that particular person, and you have to gradually, gradually, gradually take it on. I'm even thinking about it now in my head, because we've got the matinee, and it, it just... I mean, it's an enormous help. They're fantastic wigs, aren't they? Mm. Oh, phenomenal. That's really good. Brilliant. Brilliant. I think she should have been blonder, though, personally. But there we go. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's just it's just brilliant. The more the more you can look like them, the better. I think. Bit My wigs look a bit distray there. It's actually a little bit more composed yes. these days, which is better. It's very neat and compact. <laughs> That's just she's obviously oh, fighting yeah. somebody there. <laughs> And as I said before, there are two women which everybody has an opinion on. How have your opinions on them changed since playing them? Do you feel differently about them now? Well, I suppose you, the thing is, you cannot but know them an awful lot better. I mean, you say there's, there's a huge amount of people think they know Thatcher and they think they know the Queen, but they project onto the Queen. I also think they project onto Thatcher. Oh, I agree. And I think that there's so much research. I mean, I've read vast tomes, I continue to read. And you find, you know, it's really fun when you're sort of, you know, God, you're in week 11 of the run, you're thinking, right, go on. And you find one new little piece of information which just lifts that show for that night. I mean, I know her so much better, which can only change your opinion of them, without a doubt. But I mean, I think that the, the, the fantastic, the amazing thing is to have so many resources, to be able to do so much research on a character. I mean, normally you've got your character and that's it, and you've sort of you've got a little bit of information, but mostly you make it up. Well, it's glorious to dig deep, 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 and actually try and make it as real as possible, and to look at those inner motivations that led to that outer persona. But it's, I mean, it's huge fun. I love playing somebody real. I'd like to do that much more often. Who would you, I was going to ask you this next, if you had to pay two pairs of women from history, who would you pick? Ah, oh, great question. <laughs> Suggestions from the audience. Right. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are so, so many. I mean, many, yeah. I suppose historically <clears throat> the irritating thing is most of we know mostly about men. And the point is, if you do dig deep, you find some extraordinary women out there. Yeah. You know. I'd How like to do Elizabeth Fry, who was a Quaker reformer of prison. Yeah. So I'd like to have a go at her. Yeah. I think I could do Princess Anne as well as the Queen. So. <laughs> 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 you could do Princess Anne. And would you ever like to switch roles? Do you ever think, oh, I'd like to be the Queen tonight? Oh, yeah, why not? Be yeah. a laugh. <laughs> be a laugh, wouldn't it? I mean, we work worse. Don't worry. We work. <laughs> <laughs>
I think they've got the casting right. <laughs>